Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, I'm going to show you 10 amazing hidden features on the Samsung One UI running on any Samsung smartphone. Now, in this video, I'm using a Samsung Galaxy Note 9, but it's going to apply to any other smartphone that is Samsung and that is running Samsung One UI. So let's dive right in and discover. Now, the very first thing I want to talk about is known as the screen flash option. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. Just go to the settings and then go into accessibility. And at the bottom, you're going to see advanced features. Just tap on it. And over here, you're going to see the flash notification option. Now, when you tap on it, uh, there's one usual option that you probably know. Uh, that is the camera flash option. So anytime you get a notification, the camera flashes to know, let you know that you got a new message or any notification. Now, the second option here is known as the screen flash option. Let me show you exactly what it does uh, by turning the phone off. I'm going to send myself a text message. I want to see you exactly what happens. All right, so there you go. So I got a text message, and as you can see, the screen actually flashed a yellow light to let me know that there was a message that came in. Now, this actually applies to other apps as well, not just for messages. Let me quickly show you what I'm talking about. So if I go to the uh, clock icon over here, clock, if I go right inside, if I set a timer for two seconds, when the timer ends, I'll get a notification. And as you can see, the screen flashes in yellow to let me know that the timer is in fact over. Now, the next feature I'm going to show you guys is how to launch Google Assistant by using the physical keys on your actual smartphone. So you have volume up, volume down, and power. So let me go to the settings. I'm going to show you really quickly. Uh, go into accessibility and then go into advanced settings one more time. And over here on the top, we've got two options. You can either press volume and power, I'm sorry, volume up and power at the same time or volume up and volume down at the same time, time to launch certain applications. So if I were to go in here, and if I enable this, I can go into the voice assistant, enable that, click allow, click OK, whatever it says, just click OK. And then what, what's going to happen is every time I press power and volume up key, it is going to, in fact, launch the Google Assistant. All right, so that's one way to launch the Google Assistant using physical keys. Now let's uh, disable that, go back over here. Now the next thing I'm going to be talking about has to do, uh, again, with the same setting option. Under advanced settings, you've got something over here that says direction lock. So if I go inside, this is going to allow me to actually unlock the phone with, with a bunch of directional gestures. So if I enable this guy, it's going to ask me to enter my current pin, and then it wants me to draw a series of six or ten different directions. Let me just uh, draw up, up up, 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 and that's going to be my new password to unlock my screen. So let me just click continue. Let me just confirm it one more time and then click confirm and then we're good to go. Now when I turn off the phone and if I turn to unlock it, it's going to allow me to put directions into it, up, 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 to unlock that smartphone, which is absolutely fantastic. Just another way to customize your smartphone. So the next thing has to do with the keyboard. Well, let me go to the settings and let's go down over here to general management, go right inside and then tap on language and input. Tap on it again and then go onto the on screen keyboard right over here. You tap that and then choose Samsung keyboard, which is your default keyboard, as you can see right here. So when we go inside, you have a bunch of options. My most favorite option is you can tap on the keyboard layout and feedback, and that allows you to change a bunch of things on your keyboard. So I can add a keyboard toolbar. I can actually change it from light to a dark theme on my actual uh, keyboard. As you can see, you can get a preview as you do that. So you can go like this and like that. Uh, click apply. And also you can uh, do something like this. If I go in over here, uh, oops, sorry about that, uh, to the uh, themes, I can use adaptive theme. So that is going to adapt the actual keyboard theme based on what you're seeing on your screen. It's going to adapt the color of the screen. Okay, so that's one. And then you can enable the high contrast keyboard, which is going to look uh, like this, 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 or that, okay, which is fantastic. Let's just disable that for a minute. And the one thing I really uh, like using myself is the keyboard toolbar. So let me just go into the... Uh, Chrome here, and here is the keyboard as you can see. Now with this keyboard, if I want to go into the settings, I would have to press a, this button here and then access settings from here. I have a bunch of toolbars over here. 
what I can do is I can actually uh, add that toolbar to the top over here. So if I go back over here, boom. Uh, if I tap on the uh, layout and feedback, go into the toolbar, enable it. Now if I go back into Chrome, as you can see, that toolbar, tool, toolbar is now on the top here. I can access settings right from here. Fantastic, all right? So this is the area that you want to come in to customize your keyboard. You can even change the size and the transparency of your keyboard if you uh, want a bigger area to type on. All righty? Fantastic. Let's move on to the next tactic. Now, one thing I absolutely love is known as the soft key edge on your edge screen. So if I go to the edge screens over here, I have the soft key edge option installed and enabled on my uh, phones over here. So what you can do from here is you can access the recents. All right. Uh, you can go back over here. You can actually go home. You can go over here again. You can go back. And then the best part is you can do a screenshot if you so desire. And if I go one more time, you can just lock your screen without having to press the physical button right over here. All right, let's go back in here with the direction lock. So, oops, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so if you, if you don't have this, what you want to do is you want to go to the settings. All right, from here, uh, you're not going to have it here. So you're going to have to tap over here and go into the Galaxy Store. And then from Galaxy Store, just search for Soft Key Edge. Soft Key Edge. And it's going to show up. Download that. Then it's going to show up uh, oops, in this area here, and you can just simply select it to enable it, all right? And soft key edge is absolutely fantastic. One more quick tip I'm going to give you with the camera is if you launch the camera, let me launch it real quick, you can go into the settings, and then from here what you can do is you can go over to shooting modes, tap on it, and then click floating shutter button. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you a shutter button that you can put anywhere on the screen to take photos. Normally, you would have to press this to take a photo, but sometimes it is more convenient to have it at a different location. So you can put this anywhere that you want. Boom. If you've got little fingers and it's hard to reach over here, you can just have it right here. Boom. All right. So, all right. So let's move on to the next tactic. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, the first thing I want to show you guys, you may or may not already know. Uh, it's something I've shown before in my previous videos. Uh, but what I'm going to really show you is something hidden even under that other feature. So let's go to the settings and let's go into the um, accessibility right over here. And then tap on interaction and dexterity. And then simply enable the assistant menu. Now, as you know, assistant menu is a contextual menu that appears on the screen. You can put it anywhere on the screen. You can tap on it. It gives you some options. Uh, you can go to the home, uh, you can tap it again, you can swipe over, you can bring down the notifications panel and all that good stuff. You can tap it one more time. You can even uh, lock the phone if you want to. I can just tap on screen off and that's going to turn off the phone, which is great. Now, like I said, you may or may not already know this button existed. And if you didn't know, now you learn something new. If you did know, then keep watching. So let's go to the settings. And let's go right back into the same setting, uh, which is right here. And let's tap on the assistant menu. And this time, what I want you guys to do is go into the assistant plus menu. Now, the great thing with this menu is uh, when you enable this, uh, this menu actually gives you, starts to give you contextual menu options for these particular apps. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I go home, uh, and I tap on this button, you get all the regular buttons. You get home, you get the recents button and all that good stuff. You get the back button. You can take a screenshot if you want to, right? But if you were to launch one of these uh, apps, for example, the camera application, which I'm going to launch right, right now. Uh, let's go into the camera app. Uh, when you tap this button, now it gives you contextual options specifically for that uh, uh, app that you're running such as being able to switch the camera. If I tap this, it's going to switch to the uh, uh, front-facing camera. And then let me tap it again. It's going to switch over to the other one. If I can tap this again, it'll take me to the gallery uh, and all that stuff. So these are the contextual menu options. Now, let me go back here to the settings. I'm going to just show you everything. I like to go into the details. So we have contacts. Let's go to the uh, messages and phone. So if I go into my phone, uh, here's my regular phone dialer. If I tap on this guy, 
Now what I have here is if I go to the first page of this contextual menu, I can access the recents, contacts, and places, which is these things at the bottom right here. I can even uh, create a brand new, I can tap on add to contacts, uh, enter a number, and just tap this, boom, and it's going to add a new contact, all right? And if I go back here, we got the messages. So if I go to the messages over here, uh, now if I tap on this one, it's giving me, it's giving me options to compose a message uh, that is right over here, okay? So you're going to get, in some of the apps, you get a lot of options. In other apps, you only get one option. And real quick, before we go out, let me give you a final bonus tip. So if you go to the settings of your phone, and if you go all the way down, if you tap on About Phone, uh, what you can do here is you can tap on Edit and change the name of your smartphone, okay? So I put mine as Saki 9. It's just easier to recognize when I'm doing some networking with the phone or doing a Bluetooth with the phone. I can see that Saki 9 showing up on other devices, so it allows me to easily identify the product. All right, so thank you for watching this video, guys. Make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech for more videos to come. And of course, if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, make sure to follow me on all at Saki Tech Online. For now, have a fantastic day.